All right, so this is going to be the last video you're going to see me bragging in respect to Russia, Soviet Union, USSR. For the last video, whether it's going to be disappointing, whether it's going to be uh, empowering, for good or for bad, when it comes to the Soviet Union, Russia, Russia, I have chosen to give you a tale, a real account about, I think it was the best car manufactured. It's not a Russian car, but it is manufactured in Russia. It was manufactured in Russia, it no longer is. Uh, it's about a lot of Samara. It's about my life. It's about uh, beginning maybe age two, age three, age two, when delivered from Belgrade also to Moscow. Uh, it's about my MKUltra life in Moscow, uh, also in Belarus, but Moscow was what Lavrov was to the children, international children in Moscow. Uh, oh, that's exactly what Lukashenko was to the children in Belarus. There were other presidents in Belarus, in the Republic of Belarus and so on. They had other people uh, running the country before Lukashenko came to, to decide about everything. Lukashenko was completely indifferent from Lavrov. Uh, in terms of uh, international exchange, uh, flow of uh, ideas, trade, socio-economic uh, relations. Uh, I'm saying, I'm, I mentioned Lukashenko because he was, uh, in my case, this man participated as far as, as much as, as far as the memory go on I don't know, not exactly, uh, but uh, Lavrov was more. Lavrov goes all the way, all the way, all the way back in time. But Lukashenko was very, very early on to on a picture. But this isn't about, yeah, well, it does concerns uh, Lavrov. You know, it's like this. For this video, before I go on, uh, this video is gonna be dedicated uh, to my last attempt to eventually save Soviet Union, believe it or not. Uh, the year was 1984, and this was the end of it. Uh, anything that Russians did in Moscow to me uh, or their sympathizers and had flavors of violence was what as Putin loves to use asymmetrically responded from my end. It was just no way, no how, no way uh, from my giving up on life. They wanted to put me through into the school for mentally retarded, into the school for the children with a special needs, mentally disabled children, uh, did not agree for me to continue, even whatever program would be offered to me uh, in continuation from the grammar school. They didn't even want me to finish the grammar school. This is how the 
this is how severe the violence was yeah so um it was a lot of struggle it was a lot of stuff but it's one thing that i liked about the russia uh, i liked females a lot and i was always trying to find the pattern between myself and between the russia um I wanted to fit somewhere and I I was so impressed with the female with the Russian females that uh, the only individual in the Balkans in within this federation uh, the Yugoslav Federation uh, I was interested in uh, even populating one under MK Ultra with Russian females. Uh, I love the Russian females and uh, got an idea that uh, everything maybe would even function uh, if uh, would be Russian females here. If you know you would have a freedom of choice and you would go and you would get yourself uh, you know the kind of female that you like. You know in that sense these were all the ideas crazy ideas under mk ultra drugged up as i was definitely did not have absolutely any bad intentions not even for the soviet union russians couldn't afford to like me though it was programmed since the beginning of the time since my age too uh, for me to become uh, a symbol of ultimate uh, uh, hatred that would be presented in eyes of the Russian Serbian people. Uh, the idea was to, and it's what I was even used during the war on the front lines, where they would deliver me. Uh, to the soldiers in Serbia uh, and also in Donetsk and also in Crimea to, to the Russian soldiers uh, tortured me prior to delivering me on those front lines and to demonstrate them basically what the neo-Nazi uh, the hater of the Russians looks like uh, Serbs if you like looks like uh, then they would go and they would engage in the battles and stuff like this all under obviously under if not permanent then at least temporary schizophrenia paranoia till they would accomplish those combats they wanted people to go over there and die for uh, and then they I would be again listed to uh, uh, as a hero and uh, cherished and stuff like this. This is reality. This is what this movement, this Chetnik, Belgrade, was well, one thing they couldn't stand, basically. If I demonstrated uh, on the other side when I would be delivered some brazen, uh, totally contrary to fear uh, actions, which were plentiful uh, but this video is about my last attempt to save the Soviet Union uh, Yugoslavia if you like my last because I'm saying my last because for everything I did good for the Soviet Union for the Russia it was always everything that I accomplished something that that benefited Soviet Union or Yugoslavia financial investments military medical whatever kind of uh, research industry flow uh, investments it was always paid back like this Tito would have killed me already a long time ago uh, but he was so lucrative here in Novo Mesto car manufacturing industry from the west uh, arrived here with investments pharmaceutical company gained uh, 
unprecedented breakthroughs, uh, technological breakthroughs when compared to to the Eastern Europe. It was nothing, nothing like this anywhere. Uh, human experimentations done on me, demonstrating people how you can kill, basically retard, physically retard, destroy a person physically with through injections, playing with a growth hormones, or you can advance, grow in one. Uh, all this, I was the one who did this. But for every stuff like this, they did to me. And that's why I said earlier that the ultimate goal of Kremlin was basically to use me. What they anticipate is going to eventually grow into systematic fall of Soviet Union, Eastern Bloc, basically. They knew that's going to happen, and that sooner or later they are going to have to defend with whatever uh, legacy of the Soviet Union they will be left with, uh, borders of the Russia, basically, expansion of the Serbia and the Balkans and so on. Yeah? That's why they did this stuff to me. Probably didn't even hate me so much. Uh, many of these people, I think they probably even liked me. But regardless of it, this is about the last time I wanted to, as I stated, my last goodwill, okay, to the Soviet Union was a car, uh, uh, an imitation of Deloran, uh, imitation of. Uh, Several cars that uh, I was impressed with, uh, and uh, it was just something that Soviet Union claimed Lavrov was the one. Uh, I, I feel I was like uh, I felt I was like a cormorant. Like you, you take the cormorant bird and you you cuff one, you you put one on a rope, and then you release one from the boat, and he'll dive into the water and bring you the fish. Basically, that's what Lavrov was using me. And I hope that along this procedure, um, I am actually going to be somehow accepted, you know, in this great Slavic world. This Slavic world is a fascism. This is a fascist supremacy. A regular fascism is what it is. It's not Nazism, but it's a fascism and probably also Nazism. God knows how far this stuff goes. Uh, that's how I see the Slavic world. I see the Slavic world as a classic form of the fascism. Classic fascist, classic fascism. They started to use also the facial uh, imagery, what the face of the Slav should look like, and they bullied with that kind of stuff. So I have all the grounds, all the everything I need, basically to to, to classify Polish, uh, Ukrainian, also Russian, Belarusian, Serbian, uh, Slovenian, Croatian, Bosnian, Bulgarian, all the what goes into the category of the Slavic, the people that I met had a classic fascist, even a neo-Nazi characteristic, even a characteristics of the neo-Nazism. It did not defer anything. It only deferred in, oh, they, they did this. It, it was always Hitler. It was always uh, a Nazi. It was always a Nazi, uh, Aryan, a Nazi, Aryan, Nazi, Aryan. But at the same time, they were magnifying. They were like... Uh, you should marry this girl to look like us. You should marry that girl to look like us. You should, you must this because we must this. It must that because and so on. Um, at the same time, they would not allow, like let's say Maria Zaharova that was involved in my MK Ultra since the childhood became an option unavailable. Uh, basically, they were buying time 
they were doing the kill, they were doing ethnic cleansing, they were doing much, they were preparing themselves for what I stated earlier to expand this grand Russian uh, Serbian borders beyond what used to be uh, their borders within the Soviet Union or within uh, a federation, uh, Yugoslav Federation of Republics, Sferia, Greater Serbian Chetnik State, it's how I really call one this. Um, the last time I tried, I invested and even throw as a dice on a table with Angela Merkel, the last time I tried was by even throwing a German, a Western German psychologist on a table by asking him for me, uh, because they made the whole thing like some kind of a competition between me and between the Ruskies, yeah? And about the ideas, it was all about the ideas. This was basically the way to get, uh, to get them involved, the way to, a nice way, a very friendly way from United States of America, from Germany, to, to change this hatred, this fascism. Uh, and I really asked, because it was about the cars, Lauro dream about the car already sometime, there would be a car that would be more the car because you don't like the cars, the Soviet cars and stuff I didn't fucking like. I didn't like those cars, boy, I didn't like it. I didn't like the same fucking car they, they manufactured uh, for 50 years, the same design, the same car, always was the same. Boy, I didn't like that. Uh, and it was about what, what, how, if you could, or what would you, what would you, and so on. And in my head was a Volkswagen Golf. And uh, Volkswagen Golf was a, just a German, a traditionally German car is what it was, and uh, and uh, Germans would not give no Volkswagen Golf. Volkswagen Golf is 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 more than a brand. This is more than Volkswagen. It's a cult, actually. Uh, you don't understand. If you go back to generations, there is people that would drive this folk, fucking Volkswagen Golf already. I don't know. Since the first car they would purchase, and they they would manufacture one here in Sarajevo, also in Bosnia, they manufactured this Volkswagen Golf, which was, however, was only the car for even it was manufactured in Bosnia. Uh, it was the car that was for uh, you know for elites, yeah. the elites, the elites uh, were the the ones that they. Uh, they would get a hold of, uh, you know, the Volkswagen Golf. My father uh, is Tito had request for this technology, for this Western stuff that would come closer and thus Tvornitz Automobila Sarajevo, the Volkswagen opened. Uh, he had this original Volkswagen buggy uh, improved series that he was so uh, proud about. Anyhow, this is about Volkswagen buggy and uh, Hornets Automobile Sarajevo Pass, which was destroyed during the last Balkan War. Uh, this is about uh, Lada Samara. I don't know how much you have heard about this car, uh, but Elon Musk, who came to Novo Mesto and eventually Leased, he he literally leased the car from the man whom I have sold mine, my Lada Samara, uh, was so uh, enthusiastic. He was so taken over by the car, Lada Samara, that he would use the concept of the Lada Samara. Uh, called me a genius and would use the concept of the Lada Samara for his, well, Tesla cars. Uh, it would be the interior concept that appealed to him so much that he would use later to uh, uh, on his Tesla cars, and it was it was a success. 
uh, was also asking me about how I would do the stuff, what I would change about and so on. And I gave him some ideas uh, that, I don't know, that car is just, do you know who developed that car? Lada Samara. At my request, at my description of what I wanted from the car, uh, let me just see here. It was the guy like this, it was a German psychologist that was uh, involved in Antioch and who always sided with me. He, this man, religiously sided with me. Uh, let's see that. Uh, male age, uh, 60, let's see something. You know, what we're going to do is we did some. We can see something. I don't know. I don't see. I did say one picture of it. So I want to show you a picture of the man who religiously advocated me. Man who would get into the face of psychiatrist Peter Kopsch into the fight, uh, would threaten them. He was from Western Germany uh, without absolutely uh, nobody fought for me like this German guy. It was one German guy. Let me let me see if I can find the picture of what the man exactly looked like. This was a slender, uh, a skinny guy. Um, not even, yeah, German face. Yes, yeah, but you know, uh, it 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 would look like in his older age, he would look like something like this here. Uh, let me see one more time so you get something better. Okay, we're going to use this guy here. He would be something like this. And he was slender and he was a psychologist. Oh, there we go. So that about that. Uh, actually, slender, dynamic, strong. Uh, and he was resistant to the bullshit. He cut through the bullshit, and he would always come to my defense. All right, if he would have a few extra kilos, uh, he would probably look like something like this. This was maybe even a psychiatrist. I don't know. Uh, but I know that he was feisty, uh, and whenever he would get into the fight, with uh, those involved in one in Slovenia or even in Russia, uh, they would uh, cut the bullshit and they would listen. They would stop harassing, they would stop attacking, and they would listen because before he got into the fight, uh, he always had his in and out, basically. He, he would get into something, he would not get into anything like this, and he would see me, they would assault me and stuff like this. Uh, he would not even meddle and stuff like that. Now, I remember him since I was little. I remember him, his, him being involved in it. Uh, since I was, I don't know, maybe even in the first grade of the grammar school, I don't know. Uh, I don't know, maybe age, maybe age 10 or something like that. Uh, second, third grade of grammar school. Um, but he never exited a single fight. Uh, he did not, he would not exit a fight without uh, yeah, but very, very, very much like this, you know, very, very much like this, except he didn't have any beard. He did not have any beard. Maybe he grew one when he was older, whatever, but he would not have any beard. He would be always clean shaved. Yeah. Uh, that's what Angela Merkel stated me. That is somebody who you will have to recall if you want this case to be admitted. This case already is admitted. 
But the thing about it is that it's nice to give you a, a very, very special account about how things went. Okay, I'm not going to bother with it. I gave you a little bit idea about what uh, what this man looked like. He was like, okay, uh, let's see something else. There's one thing about him. He never got fat. He was always, he always kept the shape. Uh, yeah, he always dressed himself casually. He did not, he would not wear business suits. He didn't wear now, anything special, he would have a shirt, a, a sweater, whatever it would be. Uh, nothing special, but he would always make his entry and exit that would make those that were picking on me and doing the shit to me think twice before they would try to repeat the same thing. Of course, he could not handle this stuff. He eventually, at one point, he was compelled, forced. Uh, to even turn against me, which is like rather strange. He did, uh, but under such a political pressure that he faced from German politicians alone, uh, he absolutely had no, he had no choice. He really didn't have a choice. Yeah, there is nothing like this here anywhere in the picture. Uh, as close as it gets is what I demonstrated you right there. That's all. I'm just going to stick to this here. You see this here? But skinnier than this, this. I don't know whether he was a psychiatrist or a psychologist, but he was the... He was always the one who claimed that I'm sane and this and that. There's nothing wrong with me and so on. And was used like some kind of lawyer to actually rationalize my <laughs> MK Ultra stuff, whatever. Uh, I don't like that stuff, to make myself clear. Uh, but uh, he was a sort of philosopher explainer on why I reacted something if they were trying to misrepresent facts about me. Now let's go to the Lada Samara. The Lada Samara was immediately, as soon as they manufactured one, uh, right in front of our house in Slovenia. And the one who delivered this car in front of our house was the husband from uh, my sister, uh, Brane Golot, was the one who immediately purchased this. You know, his bosses helped him out. He participated in MK Ultra. Uh, he became an MK Ultra staff member. He would travel to the Russia. He was on news. He was everywhere in Belgrade, in Moscow. He got to know entire background. He smelled absolutely everything. Before you know, uh, he had a car like this in front of our house. It was very beneficial for whoever got involved in MK Ultra, yeah. And uh, finally, in uh, I don't know what the year was. Well, what the hell was it? I finished this. Uh, I finished the school and uh, everything. Uh, and uh, I had the Fiat. I had Renault. And finally, I got myself exactly the car that you see here, exactly like this, a used one. Uh, but I love this car from beginning to the end. And the truth about this car is that this car was designed literally by the man that somewhat, by what somewhat looked like the man uh, I described, to really based on uh, his asking well, how I would want the car to look like. This was developed entirely by the Germans, uh, and it was a gift to the Sergei Lavrov. It was a gift to uh, President Boris Yeltsin. He was not even a president back then, Boris Yeltsin.
Boris Yeltsin. This is the guy here that you see. He is. He has his hands over there, uh, lifted up. Yeah, like he's trying to tell something here. So that this should be also important testimony for the Ruskis, so that you will know how things went and why everything had fallen apart. Uh, he's got the hand over there and so on. Well, uh, the characteristic for uh, Boris, here, Boris Yeltsin was that uh, Boris Yeltsin he didn't have anything to tell. The problem of Boris Yeltsin, the biggest, <laughs> the biggest problem of the Boris Yeltsin was that Boris Yeltsin didn't have anything, anything smart to say. This is the horror about the Boris Yeltsin about the uh, uh, Boris Yeltsin. It's horrible. It's fucking horrible. He is a real, real, in my personal opinion, he was a real disaster. He was indifferent from a Josip Broz Tito. Josip Broz Tito, this man here. Josip Broz Tito was extremely, extremely powerful, strong whenever he appeared uh, in front of the foreign delegations. Whenever he appeared in front of the foreign delegations, he would have a lot to tell, he would have a lot to stress, he would be very, very diplomatic, very good background, diplomatic background. He knew how to explain everything. But whenever he would find himself in his home in Belgrade, uh, he was just uh, nobody. He was surrounded with the Serbian Chetniks, and he treated everybody, he, he referred to everybody like a drug, tovarish, and so on, a, a, a friend, a, a, not a mate, but a friend, a drug, tovarish, comrade, uh, like during the days of his uh, battles uh, on the Balkans, uh, which were occupied by uh, Germany, by Italy, and so on. He he would have exactly, he, he saw like a compassion. He sick all the time compassion in this Serbian Chetniks that were cornering him more and more and more. Finally, he was like a peasant without his farm. Uh, he was surrounded with this people that were just taking over, uh, agitating one, resenting him in his face for not acting with aggression, let's say, on Kosovo, uh, in Bosnia against Bosnian people and so on. They, they, cornered, they were cornering him and uh, basically threatening him. And he had no capacity to withstand that type of behavior. He was like he was like a dog who would put the tail between his legs and would rather sip himself a drink uh, and enjoy evening with a Sophia Loren, uh, discuss with them the important issues. Then he would step on a stage with the foreign politicians and make his request of what he wants from the West next and so on and this and that you know, and share whatever he got with the Soviet Union. This is what this was. And the same, completely indifferent, was with the Boris Yeltsin. If he, this is the man whom I have picked up to be a president because he had a good ability to relate to me when I was a child. Uh, he was not aggressive. Uh, he was kind. He was family man. Um, Uh, very, very much like uh, Gorbachev. However, Gorbachev was becoming uh, increasingly afraid because of people like Lavrov, because of other people. Uh, they would be like, like wild dogs biting each other in the ass from the rear, basically. Whoever would be a president would be there just on a picture so that he would have this wild dogs from behind biting him in his ass. 
you know, and then he would get with the torn apart pants uh, on a stage and, uh, you know, he would make some statements about, you know, try to look tough and this and that. But in the background of it all, uh, you know, we say this like uh, Tsopatki, you know, uh, eh, you know, sucks uh, how you would say like what you wear, so like slippers, uh, when you wear that inside of your living room when you watch TV, uh, you know what I mean? They pretty much did with him uh, whatever the hell they wanted. Konstantin Chernenko, Konstantin Chernenko was... Uh, this this one was completely this one you could smell his pants actually they smell like a shit basically uh, very pleasant very nice just like Gorbachev just like Yeltsin uh, but when they started to bite in his ass from behind he was like you could you, you he he lost his mind completely all these people liked me and I liked them. But they all turn into something else uh, when they started to tear their ass. Uh, preceded by Yuri Andropov, and so on and so forth. It's a story that I repeat. The people who actually run this show uh, in this stuff, preceded by Vasily Kuznetsov, is a Kuznetsov. Ah, it doesn't fucking matter. Every politician in a Russian Kremlin was involved in this stuff here. Uh, it's I don't even know if I got this stuff in off the General Secretary Communist Party of the Soviet Union, preceded by Yuri Androff or Mikhail. Uh, let me see this stuff here. I get some interesting USSR presidents. These people, when they would leave the office, uh, it did not mean end of it. You know what I mean? It didn't mean the end of it. They would remain. They would continue to move on. Uh, they would not go anywhere. They remained. They would come back and they would uh, be there and back and forth and so on. They, they very much wanted to know. Uh, Leonid Brezhnev. Uh, Leonid Brezhnev, in a way, loved me, in a way did not, whatever, uh, like every one of them, basically the same thing, like whatever would buy their ass, basically, uh, it pretty much would be it. Oh, Anastas Mikoyan was, oh fuck, this was evil guy, this guy, Anastas Mikoyan. This was so, oh, okay, so the guys like this that would get on their ass, he would be just bad, 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 bad. Um, you know this guy here, this guy, uh, this is more or less a, a little bit of this, what you see here, a little bit, a little bit like this, a little bit the facial features, a, a little bit like this, it blended with the stuff like that, yes, a little bit like Mikhail Kalinin is what this German guy looked like. A little bit facial characteristics and the haircut that you see right there. Yes, but the guy I was talking to you about was German. German psychiatrist or German psychologist whom the Germans, Americans and others would use to translate my ideas is logical and nothing wrong with it. Uh, and, well, uh, this car was the one that for the last time was the gift 
from my part, from from my end, from to the Soviet Union, to the Russians. It was the last time, uh, last chance that I would still give. Yeah, uh, here when it comes to the uh, Boris Yeltsin, um, let's go to the Gorbachev. Uh, Gorbachev, uh, they desperately installed uh, Boris Yeltsin on the picture because they always flirted with the Boris Yeltsin. Uh, yes, but uh, in 1990, uh, I had a full dick of everybody, excuse me to express myself like this, in Moscow. I had enough. Uh, in 1984, when this car would come out, you need to know the history if you have this car. Not because I had this car. Uh, the last time, it was the last time the Russians fucked me. The year was 1984. 1984, it was the last time when the Ruskies fucked me. Uh, exactly like this was the car that I had. The last time the Russian fucked me, the last time that I stated a positive word for the Russian's sake, the last time they fucked me, never again. Uh, they got this beautiful car, Sergei Lavrov, I'm sure that you know who Sergei Lavrov is. I am going to put the, I'm going to, I'm going to keep this guy up there like that. You know, this guy, this guy. It was the last time that Sergei Lavrov said to me, uh, he, they got the gift, they got the gift wrapped from the Russians. Uh, uh, of course, it was not in 1984 because this is when the production, it was 19, whatever, 1982, whatever it was, and they started to manufacture this. It was in 1982 they got this project, that's correct. Uh, and they started to manufacture this in 1982. Uh, imagine, boy, uh, that's basically nine uh, plus two. I was 11 years old, 11 years old when this, basically the last time this gift, uh, they got this gift, the German gift, the Germans still wanted to save the Soviet Union. Would you fucking believe this? Look at me and repeat after me. In 1980. In 1982, uh, the Germans were desperately with British, with Americans, working together, still help the Soviet Union, try to desperately save the Soviet Union. They were doing best to their abilities to save the Soviet Union. Do you understand English? If you understand English, uh, you don't, and if you're interested in interview in Russian, I'm going to give you one. Uh, but in a 1982, desperately Germans, West, everybody was trying to see Soviet Union. Uh, through me, they saw capacity in Yeltsin and a number of other politicians. They were more than Gorbachev. They were more than willing to work. And you would get an expensive gift like this served on a table. What's wrong with that car? I think that car is better than, I think the car was better than Volkswagen Golf, if you ask me. Nothing. It was designed literally by the top psychiatrists, psychologists, and then designers, uh, car manufacturers, German car manufacturers, Volkswagen industry, Porsche, whatever. They designed, they, they finalized that. And it was one more time, it was just one more time, you know, that Sergei Lavrov was pleased, you know, uh, 
وهو ذكار واو جود جود جوب جود جوب يا اي سو ذكار اتس جود اتس جود جوب اتس جود جوب My my first question to Sergey Lavrov was, "Did you buy one in 1984? Do you have one?" Yes, Did you buy the car? Because he was shit. Because there was nothing other than lie to this motherfucker. Anything that Russia would get, anything that Soviet Union would get, it was nothing. First, it was good. The next. Not the same day, but the next within the next hour was already. Fuck you. That's all it was. That's how it went. Beatings, abuse, and so on. More, 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 more. Okay. My question was, did you buy one? He said, no. I told him, okay, fuck off. Uh, I didn't lose the razor. I said, I don't want to talk to you about it. Because it was nothing but shit with this Sergey Lavrov, nothing but problems with this guy. Uh, but I heard from other people that they were extremely pleased. Uh, uh, they were having a saliva running out of their mouths, basically. <laughs> Who's going to get a hold of the Lada Samara, the top politicians? They were quite crazy about it, but they still one of their other cars. So Sergei Lavrov was not a driver of Lada Samara. Sergei Lavrov tested, uh, secretly wanted the car, yeah? This, they were jerking off behind the scenes on the car, but in a public, so that somebody would know and learn about, they didn't want to be seen with a car. They liked that car. This is true about the Alada Samara, how the car came to, to the realization, to the real thing. Well, in 1984, when he did to me that stuff again, uh, basically, it was, we, uh, we like, we impressed, we, uh, we, we want more like this. Uh, and then again, like I said, uh, it was kaput. This is when it was from my end in, well, you know, uh, in 1984, the situation very much changed. This is what I was already 13 years old. And, uh, you know, whatever was before this, uh, even adults couldn't do it anymore because it went like Putin likes to say, asymmetrically. So I can say that I at least helped build, uh, design uh, a first successful, rather than shit box that they used to have those cars, uh, car that was even sold on the West. It was a lot of Samara, so that you know who delivered who brought this car to you to Russia uh, and the car that you had even sold in Germany and Britain uh, afterwards and so on. Really a first, in my opinion, a really, really, really good car uh, that Russians just couldn't understand why I was so crazy about the car. Why, why is it that I like? No, I like, I really like that car. It was really, really the car I wanted. So. That's how Yolada Samara, uh, after 1984, uh, it wasn't the Ruskies, it wasn't the Soviets anymore that that uh, that uh, run the you know the show of the violence, the show off of the violence. They got a really really good resistance from me. Uh, I was growing up. The most critical for me was when I was like 11 years old. When I didn't know if I'm gonna go, if I'm gonna pass one grade through another, that's how much was MK Ultra uh, stuff that went on. Uh, it wasn't MK Ultra; it was other stuff that went on.
It didn't have nothing to do with MKUltra. MKUltra is nothing. This is just the drugs that they use. But the question is what happens during that MKUltra, what, basically what's happening, right? So I thought that, that you would understand. Yes, I was the man who actually even dreamed about uh, populating Balkans with flooding Balkans with a Russian woman. Uh, and it was Vladimir Putin who resented me because the women I was falling for, and he eventually even used this as a strong point against me, uh, were Russian blondes that appealed to me. And because they were blonde, uh, it was, uh, or it wasn't only blondes, it was just the Russian women are really beautiful to me. And this is what, this is where the problem was. It was really a success that I delivered to the Soviet Union that hurt Vlad, Veliki Vlad, Vladimir Putin more than anything else. This is what he was biting him in his ass and Gorbachev. Such a fucking, not Gorbachev, excuse me, also Gorbachev. He had moments in between. What Boris Yeltsin, I have to admit, wanted to repair at all costs, but couldn't absolutely do anything. He didn't have enough strength to go out yeah, they probably would kill one, too. You know, I, this is very difficult. Boris Yeltsin knew that I was not a bad person. Boris Yeltsin knew that I was trying to help everybody. He knew that, you know, and he saw this evil. Yeah, he couldn't do anything about it. Gorbachev later on blamed me for all kinds of stuff against, uh, uh, upon the fall of the Soviet Union. Years later, in respect to Ukraine, because I sided with Ukrainian people, uh, he he turned against me with absolutely everything he possibly could. Regretted in my face, he did not kill me, and I don't know what. Uh, Boris Yeltsin just took his secret to the grave, which is the best thing to do. Uh, anyhow, when you may, when you when you want to make a difference in this world, that's what you do. Uh, and this is just a real story. It, it wasn't about the blonde women. It wasn't about that kind of stuff. Uh, it was a Russian anger, envy, frustration, madness, uh, a Russian fascism, a Russian Nazism, basically, that powered uh, Vladimir Putin, uh, Sergei Lavrov, there's no fucking way that somebody could be better. The same shit like in Belgrade with the Serbian Chetniks could do better than what they do. Uh, that somebody could be better, uh, even as supposed to be. I was a Slavic person, right? I was from what is known as a Slovenia. Eh? Slovenia. Uh, it didn't help. They just couldn't take. It was just unacceptable for them. Uh, if you, well, basically, pretty much everything what I did is what Vladimir Putin later on replicated, and they developed for Vladimir Putin even better than me. Vladimir Putin even got his uh, limo with I don't know 500 horsepowers and so on, which every Russian, of course, can buy and so on. So I thought that you would want to know. It's probably the, more about why the Russia is failing, why the Russia as a state, as a country, as a nation failed, because of what kind of people ran the show, because it was said in, they teach me since the kindergarten, you know, they said it was with a big letter it was written. Josip Broz Tito stated, our biggest wealth is a human being. Uh, and I felt really strange about that shit because like, yeah, fuck. And they said, some countries have oil, uh, other countries produce a technology, but our greatest asset in Yugoslavia uh, is a, a human being. Yeah, that's why we invest in a human being. Yes. Yes. Yeah. So uh, 
the type of attitude basically that you are not even worth as a fucking screw that no matter what the fuck you do and you're still going to be in the mud in the bottom of the fucking society is what was detrimental in my logic process in 1994 that we are done that the soviet when it comes to the soviet union and belgrade i told them from now on it's called zero policy it is what that that that, that, that means that, that means that i don't want to tolerate you anymore i don't want anymore the soviet union i don't want anymore the yugoslavia the serbia you want fucking war you're welcome let's go you know and your this it was returned with this and this is basically how the whole thing went down like this so just that you know about the lava samara about the russian car manufacturing industry about the balkans uh everything that i stated pretty much was a problem to the vlad to the veliki vlad to the great vlad vladimir putin yeah everything was a problem so thanks for watching this video today is september the 18th 2023 i still deem it's important video uh, i still deem it might actually make a difference to the young people in understanding how the soviet union alone uh, never mind russia went into dead-end street in the wrong direction germans americans french italians when I popped up on a picture, they were all trying to help Soviet Union. They were all, and it was nothing about selecting people as per who is of Asian descent and who is not of Asian descent and who is white and who is not white and so on. It's exactly contrary. It's exactly contrary. They were trying to get along. They were trying to do this stuff. And United States of America, traditionally, I figure out myself, was opened for a war conflict. Nothing motivated United States of America more into a war conflict than some crazy, insane dictator, like, let's say, Saddam Hussein, that would you know, people that would reserve a special privileges and luxuries for them while the rest of the population were kept on knees without the right to attend universities, without the right to medical care, without the right to what is the most important to the United States of America. You know what it is? It's universities. The U.S. always dictated in human development index. They didn't give a shit who is in Iraq, in Iran, in whatever country in China can testify to this stuff. As long as they have seen progress in the country and mutual interchange, exchange of technology, ideas, and so on, trade, uh, technology, it was all good. But if they saw somebody just jamming something, doing some shit, crazy stuff, and it was like a classic, classic example is Vladimir Putin. It's a classic, classic Saddam Hussein number one, Vladimir Putin. This is it. Classic. Classic repetition of that dictator that just uh, want to do it his way, that is just, uh, it's got to be this way uh, because, uh, and it doesn't matter, a classic, basically. Classic. Thanks for watching this video. Till the next time. That's the truth about Lada Samara. Still like the car. Very nice car. Love it.